Hello, and thank you for listening to another episode of Slasher Scotty. My name is Scotty McCoy. I am your host, and I am also the author of the Ultimate Halloween Trivia Book, and I am interviewing the cast of the Halloween franchise and other slasher and horror films. And I currently have on the phone with me Tom Proctor, and he played the motorist in Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, actually. Um, so I have a couple questions to ask you. Um, the first one isn't related to anything uh, regarding Halloween. It's uh, how did you get your start into acting? I it, it's kind of funny. We we run cattle up in uh, the Oker Mountains there in Utah, and we the location had actually uh, got their location wrong, and they were on the wrong side of the mountain so to speak <laughs> and so we accidentally rode on to the first set and uh they they figured we was in wardrobe but they, they the ad thought we were actually part of the shoot and they were having trouble trying to do a stampede and and they were having problems with their horses and <laughs> it was obvious that we could solve that problem right away, and so that's that was how it first started. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Start off with the Westerns there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you have an audition for Halloween 6, and if so, what was it like? It was really bizarre. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember the casting. Ross Brown was the casting guy. And it would, he's, he was one of these guys that sent people out in tears. I mean, you know, everybody's used to, if you're casting, you go to an audition, and casting always says, oh, that's very nice, thank you. Right. You know, and and Ross Brown was one of these, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what, what, what the fuck was that type guy? Wow. Um, and so I went in. And I, you know, and it's, it's really funny because I, I get it now in, in Utah, small town, we had our own idea of what a headshot was and what Hollywood was looking for. Right. And to Hollywood, when they came there, we were just ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, Ross Brown took one look at my headshot and he says, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I says, that's my headshot. He goes, what, you want to play Bruno in every fucking movie? This is a horrible headshot. <laughs> and I turned around and I says, says the man that's wearing bright orange tennis shoes with green pants. <laughs> I says, I'm sorry, but you somehow magically expect me to give a fuck about your opinion? Right. right. And nobody else had done that yeah. but i'm you know i've always been an old you know just the cowboy i'm who i am and you know if you don't like it there's two sides of the street so anyone who don't like it can walk the fuck around right but um uh am i cussing too much for your show no it's fine <laughs> okay I, I i don't know where we're at with this. <laughs> um but anyway uh so so he, you know, I was cast in the park, and here's what you're going to find really interesting. It was a, it was supposed to be this big deal road tr deal. He needed somebody who could stunt drive because mm -hmm. originally the motorist wrecks his truck off the side of the road and everything like this. And we were just the production was just getting into trouble with weather being bad it seemed like everything that could possibly go wrong did go wrong on that shoot right and so there was several days that just got pushed back pushed back pushed back and and then we couldn't so we couldn't film the whole driving thing because initially the girl was supposed to run across in front of my truck right hit the skids go off in the mud and the truck so then they said they just rewrote it and limited it to the part that you've seen where, you know, he's off drinking a beer, mm -hmm. taking a piss on the side of the road. Yes. And sees the girl sneak into his truck. Right. Well, even that scene, here's what's funny, is they set up rain machines and they set up everything to do it. Okay. And then on top of this rain machines came this blistering cold rain. That just that just 
hit really, really hard. And it, um, we kept getting through things. I mean, it was blowing things everywhere. A crew couldn't work with it and everything like this. Right. So all night and never got the, never got the scene filmed. Wow. And then, um, the, I went over and, uh, they said, we're going to, we're just going to put you on hold for the weather. Right. And I, I'll never forget. I said to the first AD, I said, you know, this weather's not going to let up for the next 15 days. You're going to be, it's going to be 15 days later that you'll get me in. Wow. And he says, no, we, 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 we'll get it in because we, it, it calls for bad weather anyway. We're going to get it in anyway. And I said, well, right now you could do a drop and pick up and save production some money. Right. You know, right. the SAG rules, it's a long story. But <laughs> uh, instead he says, I got a great idea. And I said, what's that? And he goes, how about you just do your job and let me do mine? And I said, all right. <laughs> that works. <laughs> so, <laughs> so... On that one little 15 second spot, they had me on hold, which means they had to pay me for 20 days. Wow. How many days were you actually on set for filming? I would have been on three days if it would have been the, the actual part. It was a right. small part. Guy gets killed right away. Right. Uh, but as the part dwindled, as the days burned to bad weather, mm -hmm. it was actually like one long day on set wow. to get that yeah. that down. <laughs> so how was your uh, death scene filmed and prepped? Uh, it was, that was probably one of the more fun things. I went <laughs> to, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember the effects guy's name. Uh, where they cast the head right. and cast my whole head and body so the spinal cord could come out the back. Right. And it was really funny because I, I, I kept getting calls to go to the conventions, yep. the 25, the 10, five years before, and I kept saying, you know, you, I think you got the wrong guy. I'm only in the movie for like 15 <laughs> seconds. I don't think, you know, the fans really give a shit about somebody's in the movie for 15 seconds. Right. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I think you got the wrong guy. Well, finally on the 25th, uh, anniversary, Sean Clark got a hold of me and he said, Tom, look, we've been traveling around with your head and your head is selling headshots and, and the fans. And we got, still got requests for you. The fans, right. the Halloween fans still want to see you. <laughs> And I, I still wasn't going to pay that much attention to it. I did another uh, little horror film with Kevin King. It's one called Fear of Clowns right. 2, which I thought no one ever even seen. It was a little low-budget film. Right. And then uh, we did a, a little movie called Bounty that Kevin wrote a lead role for me in, in a horror film. Right. And so we went. He goes, we're going to go sign... Uh, autographs on Bounty and I said fuck it, does it really did somebody see that does anybody care and when we got to the convention it was just the lines were just like crazy and wow. everybody wanting uh, Bounty and of course pictures of how from Halloween 6 right. and here's another thing that really surprised me when I went mm -hmm. to the Comic-Con conventions. They had me go there for my part in Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. And we, one of the ones we went to was in uh, El Paso. Right. And it was so, you know, you, you actors get their desks set up and they've got their different headshots and everything. Right. Still to this date, across the board, the most screen snaps that most people want right. off of my table are from Halloween 6. Nice. I, I still have people in Europe requesting them and they yeah. will pay the shipping and whatever it takes to get the, the, the deals over there. Right. Nice. So it's, 
it was a great uh, film to be part of. Right, and and dialogue, like it goes along, even dialogue, it goes a long way. And you ended up like you you only have what a couple lines in the uh, in the film, but it's so it's such good written. Uh, you know, the dialogue was written so well, and you performed it so amazing that. Uh, it stuck with a lot of people including myself like you go you just go like hey that's my truck and then she's trying to yell to you about michael coming and you're like what what and then <laughs> you're dead and like that dialogue was just w well written because it's suspenseful compared to jamie's running and the next thing you know you're dead and she's screaming and she's just you know storms off in the truck and it's like it's one of the i think it's one of the you know better parts of the of the film you know hyping up this is Michael Myers, and he's back to get hit, get Jamie. Yeah, well, it it I'll tell you what, it sure uh, jumped my fan base. Yep. Like uh, like crazy. I think <laughs> mostly because the fans knew as I was doing that that yeah. under all of my clothing I was completely naked, <laughs> and so so it just added this sexiness factor. <laughs> Just them knowing that. Exactly, there, right? There, yeah. There was a lot of fans that knew that because they sent me messages. Under all your clothes, were you completely naked? And I, you know, right. I think, oh my God, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny. You never know what's going to do it for you. I did uh, a thing on Basket, Bingo the Clown, on the Zach Galifianakis series. Right. Um baskets as in like six episodes okay and bingo has in six episodes has maybe three lines of dialogue wow he's always staggering around drunk he throws up he pukes he belches he shifts in a horse drop you know i i, right. I made a joke that if they ever give an award for the most bodily functions in a tv series i win <laughs> and um but that deal, there's something with the clowns, right. uh, has created another surge of a fan base. Right. And the the same thing with uh, the little Kevin Kangas film, uh, Bounty. Yeah. You know, I get more more comments and stuff on that than I, you know, and built a bigger fan base yep. than guardians of the galaxy and you know and you know of course i do all the i'm the racist white guy in every slave movie and so uh i don't think that builds fans though that uh, <laughs> um, I mean, i'll just say what an asshole so how was joe chappelle as a director he, he, he was really amazing knew exactly what he wanted and uh and I had watched him give direction to so many people with one line, one right. word. You know, can you do it like this? And, you know, he was right. really uh, that way. And so when every time on every take of mine, he'd say, Tom, perfect, no changes. Right. No changes. Do that again. Yeah. And I kept thinking, Wow. He either really, really likes my shit or thinks I suck so bad that I'm uh, <laughs> not directable. And, right. and that's that's just something that goes through right. the actor's head, especially back in those days when I was just starting off. I was, yeah. you know, actors are not known for being real secure with their work. Right, and I mean, sometimes one line of dialogue is very powerful with the way it's presented and spoken so i mean mm -hmm. definitely like like i said going back to your character in halloween six like your li one line of dialogue was just so powerful it built up the suspense of michael and him going after jamie and the whole you know setting up the whole chase scene with the truck going to the towards the barn it just mm -hmm. it was it was so powerful because you knew something was going to happen to you when it did happen and then J, you know JC Brandy who played Jamie her performance was impeccable with the whole you know with selling how you were were just killed by him and now she's like oh crap now I got to get out of here yeah yeah so uh, speaking of JC Brandy did you interact with her or any of the other cast members of Halloween 6 um offset or like I, I, I didn't I did with uh, George Wilberg, the you know who was playing right uh, Michael at the time, and and I I talked to JC you know 
just just lightly. There was a situation there where weather was brutal. Right. And I will tell you one thing that I do know about her. Any other actress would have just said, fuck of this shit. Right. <laughs> yes. uh, but she just kept going on through, and she was actually running and actually in a lot of that weather was yes made by rain machines but a lot of it was just the cold harsh utah weather right and there was there was no no comfort there right. uh so you didn't really mingle that much with the other cast because the mm -hmm. minute you could get offset and into a warm place like back your trailer or whatever you did it <laughs> exactly in a hurry right so uh what was it like working with george p uh wilbur he, he's just a great guy very common sense wants everybody comfortable with right. what he does uh and you know he just just really laid back and easy one of the things like when you somebody snap in your neck the biggest risk there is is that the actor will get carried away and snap too hard right the correct way of doing that is the actor puts their hand on the victim's face and the victim snaps their own neck around right and george wilberg was really good about that just taking the hands along for the ride and and right. and yet his facial reactions and everything were as such that he it looks like he snapped the neck exactly um, so the last question I got for you is, uh, do you have any future projects in the works that you'd like to promote? I have, the, the, the projects I have in the works that I want to promote is I just cut a new album. I know it's a different uh, area to go to. It's called Tom Proctor's and the A-Listers. Okay. It's a working man tour, and it's a country music album that's dedicated to the working man. All right. And it uh, is doing really awesome. The awesome. one song called In Hollywood won k Dub Song of the Year nice. and is now 47 on the charts globally. So I, I would love to promote Tom Proctor and the A-Listers in Hollywood. It's on Spotify, iTunes, everything like that. Awesome. And have as many people uh, go take a look at that as uh, possible okay. and I've got the other thing that since we're talking to horror film fans and I can't talk a lot about it okay. but do not miss DC's new series Swamp Thing okay sounds good I j just did the pilot for Swamp <laughs> Thing and holy fuck a macaroni <laughs> is it good that good <laughs> Now, when I when I combine fuck with macaronis, you know, it's a it's a fuck a macaroni. <laughs> so, so is that where it, where would you be able to see um, Swamp Thing when it comes out? It's going to be on the new DC channel. Okay. Um, but it was produced by the director of Aquaman, so awesome. it's really a uh, high effects heavy okay it's very very high effects okay and um also we're uh finding out from networks within this next month and a half they're uh considering uh putting together a reality show for me that's awesome. uh fairly interesting awesome and, and um are you the main star then of swamp thing as well no, I okay. was just in the pilot, okay. the opening pilot of it. This is the thing with me. I have this niche where I, I, and I don't really mind it. I mean, I have small roles in a lot of big movies, mm -hmm. right. but I always open and set the pace. Right. I opened the, the movie for Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Right. You know, right in the very first of that, in a very nice role that, that launched. I just got done doing uh, an opening with Julianne Moore in the Gloria's, the Gloria Steinman story just right. finished up. And um, and then Swamp Thing, okay. we, where we go in and establish that there's a problem and 
Awesome. I can't say much more than that, but That's it's true, yep. just going to be, it's not only incredibly well written, Okay. but I got to see some of the effects of the kills and, awesome. and things, and I think this is a movie that has a crossover not just Marvel fans, but horror fans. Awesome. Will love this. Awesome. So everybody heard that. Keep an eye out for Swamp Thing and all the other projects that uh, Tom has uh, spoken about. Um, also, um, if you hear this uh, podcast after this has obviously aired and uh, and everything that he was in already uh, surpassed, you can see uh, check out his IMDb page, and I'm sure that'll be updated when you get any other projects and roles that your fans want to keep a lookout for. Um, you know, in the future. Yes, and they can keep up with me on Twitter. It's uh, okay. Tom Proctor Band on Twitter awesome. and Tom Proctor Instagram. Awesome. And uh, it's just Tom Proctor Facebook, and even Working Man Tour has its own Facebook. Awesome. Sounds page. good. Thank you very much, Tom, for your time, and it was a pleasure talking to you. Okay, thank you. All a right. pleasure talking to you as well. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Yeah.